brothers and sisters, dear friends, respected followers on Facebook, peace be upon you all. It is indeed my honor to address you all once again, and it, it has certainly always been an honor speaking to you all, and I pray for the day that I could actually come out and meet you all in person. That would be very, uh, it'll be something that would make me very happy. It'll be something very special to happen in my life. This week so far has been a very interesting week, very challenging as well, and also for my office. Uh, if you excuse me, I'll just swipe to remove the comments. Sometimes the comments are filled with too much love, radical love. Basically, what really stood out this week when it came to uh, news and Imam Tawhidi was what occurred in the uh, restaurant. Now, I was with Kim and Dane, and Kim Vuga, a very brave lady, and regardless of what people may say or think regarding her party's policies, I am a man of peace, and I sit with everyone, I meet with everyone, and I support whoever has a mission to make Australia a better place, make Australia great again, indeed. We were sitting in a restaurant two days before the holy month of uh, Ramadan, otherwise we would have been fasting, and uh, we were having a wonderful time, wonderful, beautiful Afghani food, and it was amazing, up until these two radicals showed up in the restaurant. Their main problem was Tawhidi. They didn't have a problem with, with Kim. Their main problem was Tawhidi. But they knew that in order to insult Imam Tawhidi, you insult his guests, you insult the female that is with him on the table. And uh, they thought that I wasn't going to defend the Australian woman. And uh, we proved them wrong. I had to stand up and I defended uh, all of my guests, including Dane, and uh, it's just a matter of being a Muslim, standing up against the radical Muslims within your own religion, those that have hijacked it, we need to take our religion back from them. We can't have them taking their religion and uh, radicalizing youth and ruining the, the, the society that we're living in. Now, I don't want to spend too much time speaking about the incident. You've all seen the videos, and I forgive. I've forgiven them completely. And I also hope that my colleagues could also forgive them. We're people of peace. It's uh, very important for us to forgive and move on and pray for other people. Now, I have spoken to Kim before coming out live to speak to you tonight. And she sends you her thanks and gratefulness. So does Dane. And I also thank you very much for your support. However, in my case, I am in debt to you all. All of you friends that have been supporting me on Facebook, on Twitter, on social media, the emails that you send me, all of them play a big role in my life on a daily basis. And the, the feelings that I get when reading your messages, they shake me and they make me a stronger person. And I'm very grateful to have such people that write to me and let me know exactly what they're feeling in life. Now I do know that there are many emails and many messages on Facebook that await my response and I do plan on responding to them as soon as I possibly can. My schedule sometimes does put me in difficult positions but I will try to respond to you all as soon as I possibly can. However, with regards to what occurred in the restaurant, there are certain matters that I would like to make known. 
Firstly, there is a history between myself and this area of prospect. And here I do not wish to offend anyone or even cause confusion in any way possible. There is a serious matter that needs to be addressed. I, as a citizen of South Australia, I am not prepared to see another Lakemba within my state. It's not happening. Which is why in 2016, in March 2016, I contacted the mayor of Prospect, the Honorable David O'Loughlin. I contacted him by phone and requested a meeting. The meeting was basically going to discuss my activities within the area, my plans for South Australia, and the events that I will be holding within Prospect. The Mayor of Prospect, a very well-mannered, wonderful, decent, fair human being who I pray for until this very day and I respect him greatly and I acknowledge the great work that he does in South Australia and I love the work he does and indeed he has placed maximum effort in making Prospect a great city for all of its citizens however in 2016, March, the ABC, our national broadcaster, unwisely portrayed me, made me look like someone that was threatening Australia, threatening violence. And obviously the story behind that is very detailed. I do not wish to get into it because... The ABC isn't worth a minute of my time. They portrayed me in a very unwise manner. And all of the Australian patriots were insulting me after that article by the ABC. Later on, when the ABC understood what they had done, they added the line that says Imam Tawhidi said he was an advocate for peace and so on. Nevertheless, I don't wish to speak about them for too long. After the ABC article was released, the mayor of Prospect sent us an email and he cancelled the meeting that we had set up for myself and him. And it's perfectly understandable as to why he would want to cancel the meeting. You have an Imam, Imam Tawhidi, that has been portrayed in the media as someone who is violent, an extremist, who wants to come and meet you. Of course, when you've made previous arrangements with this person before the article, you didn't know. But after the article, you would take maximum measures of precaution and cancel the meeting that you had, with Imam Tawhidi, and I understood that completely. There was no problem in that at all. In fact, I contacted the mayor of Prospect that very moment, and I spoke to him and I said, Mayor, there's been a big misunderstanding. The ABC have unwisely portrayed me. I was warning the Australian nation from radicals. I wasn't threatening myself. Nevertheless, the meeting was cancelled and I never sat with the Mayor of Prospect until today. However, the Mayor of Prospect, being a professional government official, when you see that Imam Tawhidi had in fact been portrayed in an unwise manner, in a wrong manner, and in fact he's a peaceful man and who calls himself the Imam of Peace, it would only be fair for you as a mayor 
to contact me and say, Imam, I understand there's been a misunderstanding and we also appreciate your understanding of what our decisions were. However, now we are more than happy to hear what you have to say as a Muslim Imam leading an association within South Australia and who is active within Prospect, the city of Prospect. That never happened. The mayor of Prospect never got back to me. Today, I want to ask the mayor of Prospect, how do you feel? How do you feel when Imam Tawhidi wanted to sit with you to warn you from radicalization, radical Islam taking place within your city, you didn't place effort in contacting me to see what I had to say. And today, there are radicals roaming your, the streets of your city, abusing, attacking, ambushing Australian women in restaurants, in Muslim areas, and there is not one person, not one Muslim person to defend this female other than the one man who you cancelled your meeting on. You cancel the meeting on me and time goes by and Imam Tawhidi is the only man, only Muslim man because there was Dane and there were other people who were prepared to defend Australian women. But the only Muslim man there to defend Kim from these radical extremists was Imam Tawhidi, the man you cancelled the meeting on and you never got back to even when you knew for sure that he had been portrayed in wrong light. The ABC have a biased agenda against this man. I never heard back from you. I wonder if you're feeling bad after what happened within your city. That is number one. Number two, my Facebook page. My Facebook page has been extremely attractive for the left. Many of them wonder what is happening exactly. Why the sudden rise of Imam Tawhidi and his supporters. Now these are very strategic terms to use when describing me. The sudden rise of Imam Tawhidi. Well, let me assure you, this very Facebook page that you are on contains many images that date back to 10 years, date back one decade, that show you all of my activities as a Muslim Imam for many, many years. I did not just appear out of nowhere. Yes, I was discovered by Australian national media in recent times in the past year however there was no sudden rise discussions on online forums on the internet date back well regarding myself and my controversial figure date back to at least five years therefore there's no sudden rise in anything the only thing that has been happening is that the australian nation are waking up Now, the Facebook page that we have is obviously facing many attacks. The first attack would be from Facebook itself. And a big thank you to Mr. Mark Zuckerberg. Sometimes I wonder, when I sign up on a Facebook page, or when I sign up to Facebook, it feels as though I am signing up to a left-wing political party because the truth is always censored. Dealing with my Facebook page is very important for me because that is the, the method, that is the means that I have to reach you, to reach the public, to give you updates on what is happening in my life and what I am thinking and what my next steps will be. There are many attacks 
on my Facebook page, and that is very understandable. However, I am very thankful to you all, very, very thankful to you all, for keeping my Facebook page a clean Facebook page without any insults, vulgar, swearing, any form of extremism. I thank you very much for that. I understand that there are many Facebook pages that has very angry participants within the comment section. I'm very happy that my comment section is relatively somewhat cleaner than other comment sections. Now I have employed several brothers and sisters who will be monitoring the comment section as admins of the page and they will delete all comments that are rude, vile and disgusting. Any inappropriate comments will result in a complete ban from the page and the comments will be deleted. Now the main reason why I Imam Tawhidi, I'm coming out to tell you this, is because there is another tactic that the traitors within this country are using, and that is aligning me with extremism. So we understand, basically, this is what they are saying. We understand that Imam Tawhidi is not a radical Muslim. We understand. However, on the other side, he is too far-right radical, aligning me with the radicals of the far-right. Now, I am not a radical, and I am not an extremist, and neither are my followers and supporters radicals or extremists. We are educated, we are aware of what is happening, and we are extremely respectful, and we are as peaceful as we possibly as you could possibly imagine. We are very peaceful and we love everyone. And I speak on behalf of myself, I speak for myself and on behalf of those who follow me as Imam Tawhidi, understanding what my mission of peace is. We are peaceful people. Sometimes in the comment section, there might be an, a heated exchange between some of my followers and people from the outside world. However, as long as the matter is ideological, I welcome it on my page. If the matter turns into uh, disrespect, then the admins on my page will ban and delete immediately. That is because we cannot afford to be, uh, we cannot allow anyone to paint an image of myself or my followers as radicals, <coughs> excuse me, I cannot, I can't allow that, and therefore we need to maintain the image that we have. Having that said, there will be many people that try to infiltrate the group that we have, our movement that we have. I apologize, I'll just need to say, see what, what's happening. Okay. Yeah, there were people notifying me that their Facebook wasn't working. And that is basically because of the continuous censorship that I have to face on Facebook. There are those that are coming onto the Facebook page wanting to tarnish our image and we are not going to let that happen we will not allow people to impersonate themselves as supporters of Imam Tawhidi come onto my Facebook page or Twitter platform and start swearing <coughs> I apologize I'm not feeling well at all and and insult my followers and other people who have different opinions. We will not allow that to happen at all. The main problem we have 
currently on Facebook is that my page isn't verified and my Twitter isn't verified. And now we have these pages that are impersonating Imam Tawhidi and that Imam Tawhidi said this and he said that. If it's not on my page, then I haven't said it. And if it's not on the page that is linked to my website, tawhidi.com, then I am not responsible for it. Excuse me, I am not feeling well today, but I still made it upon myself to address you all, as it is very important that these matters are said. Another matter I'd like to speak about is the future programs that I have. The main thing that I am planning for in the current time is a tour around Australia. Now I've toured the world before and we have had in, from September to January, September 2016 to January 2017, the 15th of January. I spent my time in the Middle East, in South Korea, uh, in Europe, around the world, and in the Ar Arabian Gulf, preaching peace, and we had a wonderful time. And some of the photos and images are still online today. I plan on a tour around Australia and basically deliver lectures speeches about national security, about matters that concern the Australian elections, the matters that concern our safety within the community, and also the matters that haven't been yet addressed but are in your minds and I need to know what my supporters are thinking, what they expect from me, what issues they would like for me to address. Now, I do meet with many government officials in Australia and also outside of Australia. And the coming months will reveal exactly the level of diplomatic work or, let's say, government relations that we have. The coming months will reveal that. As for now, I cannot afford to announce everything at once. I need to hear what your concerns are, what areas within your state are suffering from radical Muslims, what really is happening, what's concerning you, I need to hear them. And that's the only way that I could come to your state and hear them from you in person. That is one thing that I plan on doing a tour around Australia. The updates on that matter will be announced in the very near future. As for the other matter that I wanted to speak about, that was the YouTube request that I have been getting from YouTubers. So, brothers and sisters on YouTube that have reasonable uh, a reasonable amount of subscribers on their YouTube channels who are requesting interviews with myself. Now, this has been going on since 2016, January 2016, and I honestly haven't had the time to respond. So, in the near future, I will be coming out on YouTube and allowing other people to interview me because different people have different audiences coming from different countries, different backgrounds, different experiences, different reactions to certain things, and they will have different questions, and I need to know what their concerns are so I can answer them and possibly even advise them on certain matters. Therefore, this month, starting off with the, let's say, the second, uh, the second half, if not then before that, the second half of this month, I plan on coming out and uh, attending to the interviews on, on YouTube. The links will be on my page. Let me know if you have any more suggestions.
Another matter that I would like to address and also conclude with is the matter of people calling me out for a debate. Imam Tawhidi, would you debate such a shaykh or such a person? The answer is, I am more than happy to engage in an ideological, peaceful, intellectual, educational, non-political discussion with any qualified imam. What do I mean by qualified imam? Basically, I as a Shi'i Muslim, Shi'a Muslim, I am not recognized as a imam by the Australian National Imams Council because they're Sunni from a different faith. So they don't recognize my faith to begin with. And there is not one Shia imam on the entire Imams Council there, let alone Tawhidi. So I'm not recognized by them. But for the other imams who wish to engage in debates with me, who are sending me requests for debates, I am more than happy to respond to your requests and attend and also debate on any topic you like, provided it benefits Australia. And provided that this imam who wishes to debate me, whoever it may be, is recognized by the Australian National Imams Council. Because we're looking for results. We're looking for positive outcomes. It's pointless me debating someone who isn't recognized by the Australian National Imams Council. Whoever wants to debate me, I'm more than happy to sit with them, provided they are registered as Imams in the National, Australian National Imams Council. So that after the debate, nobody says he's not an Imam. And then Tawhidi would look like someone who debated a nobody. No, they have to be people who are well recognized. And then I will be more than happy to debate them. And the outcome of the debate, for me, is that if I lose the debate... If I uh, fail to prove my point as a Muslim Imam that Islam is in need of reformation, our books do teach, uh, the books of Ibn Taymiyyah and so on, they do teach violence. If I fail to prove that, then I will resign as an Imam. It's as simple as that. And this, I think, is the best offer for anyone to make. If the Australian Muslim community not happy, uh, they're not happy with Tawhidi, bring one Imam and let's sit on a discussion table and we'll talk. I don't have a problem with that at all. Provided that the Imam is recognized by the Australian National Imams Council and there are other conditions to that. For example, there are obvious conditions. The debate has to be broadcasted live onto Facebook, there's no editing involved. And the mediator or the moderator of the discussion would be a non-Muslim, neither a Shi'i or a Sunni, so nobody says the moderator was biased. This is what I am thinking uh, as, a, as a beginning to this uh, matter. However, in the future, I will be making a special video requesting uh, a debate with all of those who claim that I am a fake and I am not a qualified Imam. Because that's the only way you can deal with it. How do you deal with such a matter? You know, I've, I've said to the government, uh, look, people are concerned. Can you verify my credentials? Uh, I've come out and I've spoken on television. My teachers are alive. You can contact them. I can give you their details. The Australian ambassadors uh, in Iran, they've met me. They know I come from the, Austra from the Grand Islamic Jurisdiction. They know I am the representative of the Grand Islamic Jurisdiction within Australia. And they've met me on that basis. Uh, what more can I do to prove if the, if the country I live in, Australia, is not an Islamic government, then obviously we're not going to get proper Islamic education, advanced education uh, in Australia. And that's no problem. Whoever wants to study Islam goes overseas and studies Islam. And that's what I did. I studied Islam. And the institutes that I studied in are not recognized in Australia and that's very normal because they're classical Islamic seminaries. But my credentials are on my website. And if there's anyone that wishes to debate me, I'm more than happy to debate. I have nothing to hide whatsoever. Provided do not uh, bring me topics like some, some recent cleric brought me a topic saying, I want to debate you about Shia in the Quran, whether Shia is in the Quran or not. 
this is not a topic I would be uh, uh, bothered to engage with at all. I couldn't care less if the Shia are in the Quran or in the Bible. I only care about the violence that is in the, uh, the Islamic scriptures that needs reformation and needs a lot of banning and editing. And if you feel that what I'm doing is threatening the religion, then come and we'll discuss this matter. I'm not concerned whether the Prophet Muhammad flew to the moon or whether... I, I don't care about these things. I talk about what concerns my country and what concerns the safety of Australia. That is the only thing I care about at this very moment. The topic of miracles and what happened in the past is something we can discuss in a regular gathering. If we're going to have an, a proper debate, then let us debate on a topic that the Australian people want to hear from us. And uh, I will be making a voting poll on my Facebook page on the topics that are suggested. And I'll hear your opinions on them and I will uh, make my decisions accordingly. Other than that, I wish you all a lovely night. May God bless you all. And please excuse me for my coughing. Uh, it's been very hard for me this week. I haven't slept very well. Uh, nevertheless, I'm also fasting. Uh, it, it is the month of Ramadan for us. Other than that, we will stay in touch. I'll keep you posted. And my next live appearance will be when I come out with the books of Sharia law and show you exactly where the violence comes from. May God bless you all. Have a lovely night. And do not forget me in your prayers, as I do not forget you in mine either. God bless and good night.